Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Office Hours with Jess. So today I'm going to be talking about the oral qualifying exam, um, which might look different in different places, but I'm going to talk about my experience doing so here at Harvard at the School of Public Health. And the reason why I am sharing this this week is because it's been almost exactly one year since I passed my oral exam um, last year at the beginning of my third year of my PhD. So again, this is very specific to my oral exam experience, which I would say is pretty similar, but it's essentially defending your dissertation aims and what that process was like for me. I'm gonna flash these. You've seen these in some of my previous videos, um, but these are my three aims. I'm not gonna walk through them, uh, but I'm gonna talk about sort of specifically like what brought me to get to these aims and why I chose them. Again, this is a slide from another presentation, but um, in developing these aims, I didn't just, you know, come up with them out of thin air, but I also didn't really have a situation where I sort of joined a lab that already had these like research grants going on and sort of like piggybacked onto that. I did have to sort of creatively think of these on my own. Um, I started having weekly meetings with my advisor at the beginning of the second semester of my second year um, to start thinking about this. So maybe like six months before I had my oral exam. In that time, I also met um, a, a couple times with my potential committee members to bounce ideas off of one another. So this is also a time to identify who you're going to want to be on your um, oral defense committee. Um, and these are generally, at least for us, the same people that are on your dissertation committee as well. Um, I can speak a little bit about who you should select, but definitely if you can, don't just pick people who are like experts in the content, um, but people that you've already collaborated with or have a relationship with, and that will really help you throughout this entire process. The readily available data sources that you can use are super important to helping you develop your aims and understanding, okay, like don't pick, a, don't develop an aim where you're going to have to be waiting on that data to be collected um, and have that be what's holding you up. Or also don't, you know, work with a data set that's like not clean and it's going to take you forever just to sort of like get it down to what you can work with. So those were huge considerations and sort of limitations when I was deciding on my aims. Um, and then I used um, the assign assignments in my grant writing class that I was taking um, at the end of my second year to help kind of, again, shape it all together and give me some motivation to actually write all of this in a document. My biggest tip, I think for everything in life, but especially here is keep it simple. I think that sometimes as PhD students, we have this dream that our dissertation is supposed to be this like groundbreaking, like the culmination of like all of our brain power and work and everything that we're passionate about. But sometimes that's just not feasible or realistic. And you do have to realize that you have a very contained amount of time to complete your dissertation. So the more complicated you make it, the more complicated it's going to be for you to carry it out. And the beautiful thing about your dissertation is you are in the driver's seat. You get to decide what your aims are and what you have to do in order to get your PhD. I think people don't really understand that. You actually get to sort of lay down, okay, this is what I'm going to do in aims one, two, and three. And once I've done that and my dissertation committee is okay with it, then I get to get a PhD. So when you're designing what those aims are going to be, why make your lives harder by making them super complicated, super complex, when you could just keep it simple? Again, pick data sources that you know you'll have access to um, and not create you know, obstacles for yourself. So that's my biggest tip um, that I want you to walk away with. So I'm just going to quickly show what I mean by how I try to keep things simple in each of my aims. So my first aim, it's again, cross-sectional, not a complex regression, and I was able to get a mostly clean data set from um, the Department of Health um, 
and the data was already completed. I just had to apply for it, which did take some time, but I knew early on that I wanted it. So I just applied for the data right away. Um, so that was my first aim. Second aim, also cross-sectional using not a super complex regression. And I knew while when I was developing this aim, we were in the process of collecting the data and I knew that we would be done collecting it uh, in the summer of 2022. So just last month, actually. So I knew that after data collection was had wrapped up, I would have plenty of time to work on the analysis. And even before data collection wrapped up, I basically got all my code ready to go so that I wasn't just waiting for the data to be done. Like I just had to sort, I could start figuring out, okay, what do I need to do so that I'm not just starting my analysis when the data collection is done. And then for my third aim, I wanted it to be qualitative because, you know, I love qualitative research, changes things up a little bit. And um, I already collected all of the data um, or half of the data I had already collected myself. And then the other half of the data I was helping um, collect and conduct some of those interviews um, and recruit for those interviews. So um, I was also very much in the driver's seat of making sure that I had access to this information, the data, um, and could complete my analysis fairly quickly. I, actually, this was the um, paper that I was able to wrap up um, the analysis for the quickest because I was able to get the data and start analyzing it right away, um, you know, well, like very early in uh, my process. Some other notes. Your aims are allowed to change even after you pass your oral exam. So just know that like, it's not like, this is a fluid process. Just because you say I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z for aims one, two, and three, if you're working on it and a better idea comes around or your analysis has to change a little bit or like something does happen with your data and you need to kind of pivot, that is totally okay. And that happens all the time. Um, I think for me, most of my aims are fairly going to stay the same, but I think that some of the focus, like I think my second aim isn't going to be as like COVID related anymore because I just think everyone's tired of COVID. So little things like that, totally okay to switch. Another thing to think about is at least for me, we're allowed to just think of these as three publishable papers rather than thinking of this as like a dissertation novel that you have to write. And again, has to be like the culmination of your life's work. It's really just three publishable papers that sort of have a thread running through them. And this has been said to me by some people, um, and I know it's kind of controversial, but no one will really ever read your dissertation in the future. Um, I don't think people read it when you're applying to jobs. I mean, you'll give job talks and you'll talk about it, but, you know, that's what you choose to emphasize. Like, you can go around, like, showing off your dissertation. But if you have other research and other experience that you can highlight as well, that that's also fine. So I'm saying this in a way of like, just know that you don't have to put so much pressure on, again, exactly what you do for your dissertation. It's really just the ticket to get you to graduate and to get your PhD. And then when you're done, celebrate being ABD or all but dissertation. So that means you're done with everything, all of your coursework, all of your qualifying exams, and then all you have left before you get your PhD is your dissertation. So definitely, you know, once you pass your exam, which, you know, everyone usually does, I don't even say, I, I would like to just say everyone does pass, um, you should go out and celebrate um, and have a good time. I think one of my committee members literally said to me um, when I, like after I would pass, like go have a glass of wine now. So you, even your professors know um, to celebrate the moment. So this is again, how I passed my oral qualifying exam at Harvard. And I wish you all um, who are doing that right now, um, the best of luck. And I hope this video is helpful for those of you doing it in the future. Thank you.